Bitcoin just hit new all-time high on what the fuck happened. Yeah, baby. Woo. We set the record. All right. We we are hitting all-time highs. Now the thing is, are we going to punch through that ceiling? Are we going to go higher or are we going to back down and bounce off that ceiling and head back down to a lower level? That's what's going to see. And we're gonna have something with some meat to show some people how to make some money. How about Bitcoin? You want you want to go Bitcoin? Yeah, let's talk about Bitcoin. All right. Outside. So every single what the F happened, we talk about Bitcoin and crypto. And, you know, I'm always saying the same thing. Buy it at 40, you know, sell it at around 50 because those were the ranges, the floor and the ceiling. So just, uh, I don't know, I'm losing track of time. A couple of weeks ago, Bitcoin and Ethereum all tanked down and went to about 41,000. I don't know about you guys, but I bought, I bought a pretty good helping of that. And then it has continued to run up. Now I say sell it at 50, but this time I didn't because what happened is it gapped up over the ceiling. So it went past 50 and it went to like 52. And now today, from what Steven tells me, because I can't look at it right now, Bitcoin is at 64, which means, well, maybe for some of you, you think it's going to the moon, but it could be hitting 80,000 because what happened before when you look at a particular stock or a chart you have to follow where it's been to understand where it's going sometimes there's no bearing on where it's going to go if you get above that ceiling but here we do have some support and resistance levels that are really defined so we could we're, hit 80. we're, well, we're, we're 400 dollars away from hitting all-time high so we're at right. 64 four right now the all-time high at 64 eight so it'll probably hit 64.8 and then it's going to decide. Bitcoin is going to decide, is it going to break through that ceiling and make new highs? Or is it going to test that ceiling and be like, ah, I don't know, I'm nice and comfy in this range. And then it's going to play in this range, which we'll figure out what that is when we figure out. Right now, we, we need to understand where the ceiling is and the ceiling's $400 away. I mean, that could happen. Shit, it probably just happened now, like my watch says. So my watch says the time and it's always right now. So that's an interesting thing. So a lot of people should really be watching their their wallets and their, their Bitcoin because, hey, it might bounce down from this ceiling and who knows where it could go. So watch it closely. Don't assume that it's going to 120 yet. We've got a little bit more work to do before it's going to get there. But this news right here is massive. The first Bitcoin futures ETF is now active. And uh, Mr. Kramer here said that it's up more than 4% in trading. So, Stephen, what do we want to talk about with that one? Well, it's just, you know, it, it just goes to show you it's been adopted more and more as mainstream. I mean, I think that, you know, uh, you know, I think that wealthy people, you know, the 89%, you know, the, the people that own 89% of the U.S. stock market, I think they feel like they have it good there, right? right? Like the market's going to go up, their financial advisors manage everything for them. If, if a financial advisor says, hey, maybe we should open up a Coinbase account and start buying Bitcoin in there and you got to get this hard storage wallet to store it in and there's all these different rules around it and it, it might throw older people or more seasoned investors off, right? They might not be willing to do something that's outside of their norm, let's say, right? So what an ETF is, is an electronically traded fund and what it basically does is it mimics what that underlying asset or that underlying, you know, whatever it is, does. So an ETF on Bitcoin is basically going to track up and down what Bitcoin does without you actually owning the actual Bitcoin. You're just buying and selling. It's very similar to when we talk about treasury bonds and the ticker single TLT, right? It just tracks what those treasury bonds do, right, Chris? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, but I think it, it's going to allow for more mainstream adoption. Is the point. I think so too. I mean, this is kind of the next evolution of, you know, now we're kind of getting into the big boy space, you know, now it's actually trading and it's not trading on its own little exchange. It's now part of the big boys with these ETFs. So good things probably. I mean, that's, that's good news. If you're a crypto investor, don't rush out and buy that Lamborghini yet, but you might be in for a little bit of a treat here. So we got one other question that came over and, and I really like this because I, I've begun uh, the process of writing a new book. Um, and, and this book's going to take a while. It's going to be uh, probably, well, here, I'll, I'll give you guys the basis. The book's going to be called the, Law, uh, the Laws of Wealth. 
Okay. So it's going to be about the principles and the laws of how do you build wealth. Now, some of you might think, oh, that's cliche. It's simple. Just, you know, do this, do that. No, they're laws. They're simple laws that have been used all the way back thousands of years ago. The same laws that were used back in Babylon. If any of you read the book, The Richest Man in Babylon, those same laws and rules apply today. Now, today, we have different machines, different places to make money, but all the laws to building wealth are the same. So I've decided to write a book, but I'm dedicating the book to my daughter. So my daughter is 17 months old as of a few days ago, and I just feel like I got to give her something. So I'm writing a book in her dedication. The book is going to be written in a third person. If any of you ever read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it's going to be written about me telling my daughter stories of how to build wealth through these laws. And then it's going to be context, the context of how it's going to be worded and how it's going to be written is going to be based on a book called The One Thing by Gary Keller. So there's a lot of moving parts to writing this, but I'd love to share one thing that my book's going to cover. And the person is saying, how do you save your money? Well, let me give you one of the laws. It's actually law number one, because nothing else matters if you don't master this one law to building wealth or having wealth in that matter. And here's what it is. All of you go to work somewhere, somehow, maybe you're self-employed, maybe you work for a company, but you all do something to make an income, correct? And when you make an income, you get paid and you take that money and what do you do? Well, a lot of you don't understand that that's not your money. You don't get to keep that money, right? You get paid and that's not your money to keep because every single one of you probably get paid, put the money in someone else's bank and then pay all your bills. And there's just not much left after because as our income goes up, so do our expenses because we just buy more shit. When we get a raise, we, we upgrade our life. And because of that, we constantly don't seem to have any extra money. So here's the first rule to wealth. Okay. The first law is you need to keep money. You need to pay yourself first. So if you made $10, I'm just going to use a round number, $10, you need to keep $1 of it. And you guys are all like, but I get to keep all the money. I work for it. It's mine. Wrong. You don't understand. You don't get to keep it, but we got to change that. We got to start keeping some of the money that we make. And the rule is one tenth. It's been one tenth forever. That's the minimum, like, right? We're talking about floors and ceilings. The minimum is one tenth of your income you need to keep. And you need to then take it and put it somewhere where you're not going to rob the piggy bank. So where do we put it? Privatized banking. But maybe you're in Australia or New Zealand. These laws apply anywhere in the world. It's not like privatized banking where it might not work in your country because of government rules and things. That law is how you begin. Okay. Now there's a whole bunch of them, but I just wanted to hit that because VCTR here on Instagram said, how do you save money? That's how you save it. But then a lot of people will then come in and this is where we got to kind of look at some arguments. A lot of people will say, well, how do I save money? How do I keep that $1 out of every 10 or one tenth? If I, if every penny I make goes out the door, go get another job get a side hustle. I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, but sometimes you just got to go out there and do a little bit more and stop bitching that you don't have any money to save. You're the reason you don't have money to save. It's no one else's fault, nobody else's problem that you aren't saving money except for yours. So you got to start keeping one tenth of the money you make. And that is law number one. So I wanted to hit that one out there. It's very important. There are five laws and 10 rules in my new book. And we're going to be hitting those each and every single week, but that's an important one. So what else we got, Steven? Yeah. So just to wrap up on, on, on Bitcoin, I just want you to kind of, you know, stick with, you know, don't, don't get FOMO. So I'll pull this up real fast, but don't get FOMO right now. Like we're at all time highs. You see all these people that have been making money. It's been skyrocketing 25% in the last week, but there are things to think about. So, you know, we always want to make sure that you're educated on this show. So like Chris always says, like Warren, Warren Buffett said, buy low, sell high, and don't lose money. So if we're at literally all-time record highs right now, you might be tempted to buy some, but here are some things to consider. So I'm just kind of, you know, this is stuff that we talk about all the time. So FOMO typically backfires. Chris, you always talk about FOMO. You want to add to that a little bit? I mean, it's the fear of missing out. It's everybody rushing into something right now because they think they're missing out, but you've already missed out. If that's what you're thinking, you think you're missing out on something, 
you, the, the train's already gone by. You, you didn't get on the train. So too many people are rushing in and they're rushing in when the market's high or when a stock is high. Remember, you know, GameStop, remember AMC? Uh, actually, those aren't over. Bitcoin is no different. Everybody's seeing this thing go up. It, and as soon as it's going up, right, it's all over the news. So everybody thinks, oh, my God, I'm missing out. And they pile money in. Folks, you're doing the exact opposite of what you should do. You should be buying low, selling high and not losing money. But what you're doing if you've got the FOMO going down is you're buying high because your mind is telling you, oh my God, I'm missing out. Folks, you're not missing out on anything. Just be patient. That's one of the rules, patience, like time. Building wealth is a marathon, not a sprint. Everybody's in a freaking hurry to get rich. And those that are in a hurry to get rich will be the next poor people. I, I hate to put it that way, but that's a fact. If you're in a rush to build wealth, guess what? You're going to give it all back. That's just, that's the name of the game. Yeah. And so, so, you know, something else we always talk about on this show is Tesla, right? So Tesla has been having a really good past month or two, you know, they're up, their stock's way up in the 800s right now. Um, you know, they're, they're, their earnings are coming out this afternoon or this evening, actually. So keep an eye on that, but their price is way up. They're expecting record earnings. They've had record deliveries lately. Um, they're doing a lot of business with China. It's one of those, those companies that, you know, it's way overvalued from a technical standpoint, but because of the technological side and because of the potential and what it can do for the country and the world, it's one of those companies that just continues to impress. I mean, people like Kathy Wood, you know, obviously says, you know, she thinks the base for Tesla is 3000. Even Michael Burry, who again, Michael Burry is the guy who predicted the 08 collapse um, and what happened then. It was one of the only people, you know, the star of the, the, the book and the, the uh, movie, the big short, even he came out this week and said he's no longer, um, actually, I can pull that one up right now. He's no longer bearish on Tesla and said that the puts that he had on the company were actually just protective and just a trade. But he, yeah, um, so he's no longer betting against Tesla. So, you know, we'll see where Tesla goes. I mean, I thought I thought we'd see a pullback by now, but it just keeps running higher and higher. So something to keep yeah. an eye on if you're one of those Tesla people. That company's got a lot of momentum. So, you know, TikTok watchers for our Instagram and everybody else, like, what do you guys all think about Tesla? You know, are you in Tesla? Do you own Tesla? Are you looking at buying it? Did you already sell it like I did? I mean, I bought Tesla when COVID first started. Tesla tanked and I bought a bunch of it and then I rode it up to almost 900 and I sold it. Now that was 900 before the split. Then it split and now it's almost to 900 again. So how much gain did I leave on the table, but see, I'm not upset because I made money and I never get mad when I make money. See, too many people have that FOMO. They think they missed out on all that. And yes, I did, but I still made a lot of over a hundred percent return on my money. So I'm not upset that I sold it, but you know, if I held it, I would have had more, but you know, that's just the name of the game. Everybody's got to trade with their rules. I trade with rules. I don't trade on speculation. I don't trade on a hope and a pray that, you know, FOMO is going to work and the thing's going to go to the moon. I, I have rules and all of you should as well. So Bitcoin just hit new all time high on what the fuck happened. Yeah, baby. We set the all right. We we are hitting all time highs. Now the thing is, are we going to punch through that ceiling? Are we going to go higher or are we going to back down and bounce off that ceiling and head back down to a lower level? That's what's going to see. And we're going to hit that next week at what the F happened for sure. Let's see. Let's hit some of these other questions that we got coming in because there's a lot of them coming up here today. The media no longer reports the news. It makes the news. Wow. Cat, look at that, Stephen. Catherine, the media no longer reports the news. It makes the news. I Listen. That right there to me is a factual statement and probably the most factual statement we've seen today. So, yeah, like, I don't know. It definitely, like, drives the markets. It. It definitely controls the markets, the news. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, and I got a bunch of people over here on Instagram coming in, you know, talking about, uh, you know, the markets. They're going to fall. So cryptocurrency. Uh, yeah, that's one of the things we're talking about. All sorts of other stuff. So, uh, the markets have been made terrible by GameStop. You, you're, you're probably right. Like the, the markets, uh, that whole meme thing and the Reddit thing that went on kind of showed a whole different side of like the, the little guy, okay, right? The retail investor having some power, having some power. But uh, again, that kind of got nipped in the butt real quick when games or when uh, freaking Robin Hood, you know, halted trading. I don't know. It, it's always you should follow the big money because that's the money that's usually going to be right. But it was really cool to see the little guys win, man. I was rooting for him. I was on the other side of the fence. I'm not going to lie. 
we were in a short position against GameStop and we were doing well, but then all of a sudden, like Reddit kept pushing it higher. And, you know, just like the hedge funds, we were on the side of the hedge funds, the big money. So we took a little bit of a, a you know, a ass kicking on that. It wasn't a terrible one, but we lost about 10 grand on playing the other side. So, you know, I lost money. I'm not, I'm not mad at the retail investors. Good for them because they made money. But again, you got to know when to hold them and you got to know when to fold them. And that's the most important thing in investing that you can ever look at. All right, if you like that video, make sure you check out this video right now. And also don't forget, subscribe to my channel and don't ever forget to smash that alert button. We'll see you on the next one.